I'm Robert Bruce Thompson. This is the Home Scientist video series brought to you by Makershed. This is the fifth of six segments in which we'll show you how to use various methods to reveal latent fingerprints. In the last segment we looked at gentian violet development, a specialized method used for latent prints on adhesive surfaces. In this segment we'll look at acidified peroxide development, a specialized technique that's used only to develop latent prints on bare brass surfaces such as cartridge cases. Latent fingerprints are almost impossible to visualize on fired cartridge cases by this or any other method. The extreme heat and high pressure that occur when a round is fired destroy fragile latent fingerprints. But the acidified peroxide method may be very useful if a criminal remembers to wipe a firearm clean before discarding it, but forgets to wipe the unfired rounds in the magazine or cylinder. This method uses only drugstore 3% hydrogen peroxide and distilled white vinegar. You can use the brass cartridge case included in the Makershed Forensic Latent Fingerprinting Kit, FORKD. If you don't have the kit, you can use any uncoated brass item. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, we don't need a lot of specialized equipment uh, or chemicals to do this procedure. We're going to use ordinary uh, white distilled vinegar, which is actually 5% acetic acid, and 3% hydrogen peroxide from the drugstore. You need to make up the mixture of these two solutions immediately before you start the procedure and then discard the spent solutions afterwards. The uh, ratio of the chemicals is fairly important. We want to use 10 parts of hydrogen peroxide to 7 parts of distilled white vinegar. Now, I have a specimen here which is actually a fired 38 special cartridge case and I've handled it normally to put uh, fingerprints on it without making any special effort to make good prints. So we'll start by mixing 20 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and 14 milliliters of the distilled white vinegar and then just drop the cartridge case in, make sure it's fully immersed. It may want to float on you so hold it down and then just wait. At first nothing will appear to happen. Eventually within uh, oh, five to ten minutes you'll see uh, the solution will start to turn a bit greenish near the cartridge case. Now this doesn't always work. It works only on uncoated brass objects. Some cartridge cases and many household brass objects are coated which means that the solution can't get to the actual brass so it won't be helpful in developing the fingerprints. In that case you can use uh, super glue fuming or another technique to develop the prints. I don't know if you can see it on the video now but we're starting to get a little bit of greenish tinge around the cartridge case. So I'm going to let this sit for several minutes and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. I don't know if it's visible on the video but the solution has assumed a greenish color and the surface of the cartridge case is obviously mottled so let's drain off the spent solution which you can simply discard down the drain. There's a minor amount of copper present in the solution but not enough to make any difference. And let's go ahead and rinse cartridge case several times. Until the solution loses its green tinge. And then we'll put it on a paper towel allow it to drain and dry. And I don't know if it's visible on the video or not, but we have some very nice ridges present on the cartridge case. That's obviously a partial thumbprint. And on the other side we have a partial fingerprint. So that's all there is to it. To learn more about developing latent prints with acidified peroxide, see Forensics Laboratory Session 8.7 in the Make Science Room. If you followed us through five segments on developing latent fingerprints, you may wonder why we haven't covered dusting for fingerprints, the oldest technique of all. We'll explore that technique in the sixth and final segment of our look at forensic fingerprint development.